Welcome to the Automation World Get Your Questions Answered podcast, where we connect with industry experts to get the answers you need about industrial automation technologies. I'm David Greenfield, Director of Content for Automation World, and the question we'll be answering in this episode is, what's the difference between standard and inverter duty motors? And joining me today to answer this question is Brent Coyman, Senior Project Engineer and Design Manager at Interstates, a system integration and engineering services company. So thanks for joining me here today, Brent. Thanks for having me, David. So let's begin with a general description of both motor types we're talking about here, uh, highlighting their key similarities. Sure. Yeah. Uh, General purpose motors and really inverter duty motors really come in many different voltages, many different horsepowers and and mounting types. So um, typically in industry, we're we're focused on three-phase motors, but there's also many single-phase motors out there. The most common type of motor uh, that we see in the industry is squirrel cage induction motors. And uh, all of these motors really transform the electrical energy into rotational energy, thereby being able to turn the equipment for a specific purpose, such as grinding, conveying, blowing, uh, and many other uh, jobs out there. So both motors really can do the same job in the majority of situations. Okay. You mentioned three-phase and single-phase motors in your response there, Brent. You know, can you briefly explain the difference and why, I've got to ask this, why the most common single-phase motor is called the squirrel cage induction motor? Sure, yeah. Single-phase motors really just use um, one phase wire and then a neutral. Um, that's most common for, you know, a lot of your household uh, motors and, and, and smaller motors. Um, Three-phase motors use actually three different phases in the electrical systems, which are all, um, if, if uh, they're all 100 to 120 degrees out of phase with each other, um, this allows the motor to, to run much smoother and much more efficient than a single-phase motor. And so it's used often for larger motors um, as we get to in industry. The reason that they're referred to as a squirrel cage induction motor is, is really because of the physical construction of the motor. Um, The the motor is a rotor or the spinning part that sits inside of a spatter cage. And really that that configuration looks a lot like a a hamster or a squirrel wheel that you would see in in like a pet store. Okay, got it. Thanks for explaining that, Brent. So getting back to the main topic here, what are the key differentiators between general purpose and inverter duty motors? Really, the key difference is is that those inverter duty motors um, are really specifically built to be operated um, by a variable frequency drive or a VFD. Um, A VFD allows that motor to be run at at different speeds, um, whereas really a typical motor starter is uh, only going to operate that motor at full speed. Um, So basically the difference between driving um, either not moving or putting the accelerator, you know, all the way to flat to the floor. Whereas a VFD, you know, you can really drive the car at any speed you want. So when when you are operating that motor on a VFD and being able to adjust the speed, you know, there are a few differences that that motor needs to handle. And one of those things is, is that since the motor isn't always operating at full speed, uh, the cooling of the motor really needs to be considered. Most of the motors are cooled by a fan that is connected directly to the motor shaft. Um, so therefore, if the motor is spinning at a slower speed, then the fan is also moving at a slower speed and therefore less air is moving across the motor and the motor doesn't cool as well. So this comes in especially important in classified areas where the temperature of the motor needs to be kept below the ignition point of the classified area. Um, Inverter duty rated motors uh, often will have more heating, or I'm sorry, more cooling capacity um, to make sure that that motor doesn't overheat. Um, Another item that's really considered within inverter duty rated motors is that because of the electronics in the VFD to actually adjust that speed, there are high frequency uh, spikes in the electrical system that are caused from really the switching of the transistors, the electronics in the drive. Over time, these can cause damage to the motor insulation. And so having a inverter duty rated motor means that 
really the insulation on those windings um, are are thicker and they're made, meant to hold up to those spikes longer over time. So therefore the inverter duty rated motor has a longer lifetime when running on a VFD. Okay, now, now Brent, you mentioned classified areas in your response there, and, and I'm assuming that you're referring to like class one div two type environments that can be prone to explosions. Is that what you were referring to, or are there other types of environments like this that should be evaluated when selecting motor types? Yeah, in general, I was referring to um, the hazardous classified locations, both um, class one areas, which are where you might have hazardous and combustible gases, and then also class two areas, which are where you have combustible dust. Those are the, the areas of concern that um, uh, really relate to the surface temperature of the motors and making sure that uh, we don't inadvertently create an ignition point uh, with that motor and uh, igniting that hazardous environment. Really, other environments that could be considered um, you know, it could be like corrosion areas where you have uh, acids or chemicals or some food processing areas that might have high, heightened uh, requirements for cleaning, but they aren't typically as concerned with the heat um, issue with a VFD, but they are a consideration for selecting your motor. So are there specific applications for which you would prefer one motor type over the other? So it is just good to note that it is required that if you are in a hazardous or a classified area, um, that you do are required to have an inverter rated motor um, if you're operating on a VFD. And that's really just due to the issue we were just talking about where if you do have um, that motor overheating, it can become an ignition source that you know, could cause the environment or an explosion in some of those areas. So. That is a, a, a specific area where it is required that you have an inverter duty rated motor. Um, there's many other areas, of course, that aren't hazardous. Um, and in those cases, it's still a really good idea to use inverter duty rated motors um, if you're operating those on VFDs. You can run a standard motor on a VFD. Um, usually it will work just fine, but like I said, you could overheat that motor and over time, you will shorten that motor's lifetime um, by operating it on a VFD if it's not easy for it. Well, thanks for explaining that, Brent. So while we're speaking about applications, I know a big difference between these motor types are the application specifics. And a common application variable for motors is torque. So when it comes to constant torque or variable torque applications, which motor would you choose for each and why? So yeah, really, constant torque and variable torque are more going to be characteristics of the VFD itself rather than the motor. So uh, as we explain that, constant torque really is means that that load is going to be static during the entire operation, whereas variable torque means that as the motor starts spinning faster and faster, the load on that motor will actually increase. So a couple of examples, a, a fan is a typical variable torque load as um, it doesn't have a lot of load at low speed, right? You're just spinning, uh, you know, basically the blades on, on bearings. But as you continue to increase the speed, as it continues to have to push that air, the, the load of that uh, fan continues to increase. Um, whereas, you know, a, a constant torque means that, you know, you're pushing, you know, a conveyor, a loaded conveyor is often a constant torque application where, you know, no matter what, you're pulling that same amount of load um, as you start spinning it. So choosing the, the right motor and VFD is really based on knowing what type of load the motor will be turning. Um, but constant torque and variable torque is probably more a choice on what type of VFD you're purchasing rather than the motor itself. Understood. Thanks for clarifying that, Brent. So I, I like the example of uh, the fan as a type of load uh, that you gave an example. Are there any other types of common examples of load types and the type of motor that would best accompany each that you can provide? Yeah. So like I said, variable torque type loads, you know, fans, um, types of blowers, um, pumps, you know, that are pumping liquids of, of different types. Those are typically all variable type, uh, variable torque type loads. Uh, type of loads that would be considered more of a constant torque would be 
Uh, like I mentioned earlier, conveyors or grinders, mixers. Um, again, any place where you're starting and really the motor is trying to turn a piece of equipment fully loaded or full of product is, is what you're going to see as a constant workout. Okay. Now, RPM is, of course, you know, another big motor characteristic that comes into play for specific applications. So as it applies to minimum and maximum RPM, where do standard and inverter duty motors fall? So, yeah, the RPM is really the standard on how fast you want the motor to spin. Um, it's really determined by the design of the motor itself. And, and both inverter duty and standard duty motors are are easily available in many different RPM configurations. Um, when you have a VFD, the difference is, is that you can operate that motor from zero to 100% of that RPM. Um, and in some cases with a, with a VFD, you can actually run it faster than what the, the motor um, design is. And so that's really the main difference with, uh, with that both, um, Standard and inverter duty motors can run at many different RPMs, but uh, you know putting that inverter duty rated motor on a VFD is how you allow it to go from zero to 100%. And now, duty cycle and dynamic performance are two other motor characteristics that come into close consideration for certain applications. Can you explain these characteristics? Yeah, duty cycle is really about how often those motors are starting and stopping and, and basically how much of the time those motors are running. Um, it's often defined as the number of times per hour that the motor starts and stops. Um, with most applications, you're going to want a continuous duty rated motor as that motor is often going to be running for multiple hours at a time. Um, both standard and inverter duty rated motors um, would uh, would have continuous duty ratings, um, whereas a, a duty cycle would be a, a motor that's only running uh, for short periods of time. Okay. Now, while inverter duty motors have you know been around for quite a while, they're they're certainly newer than general pu purpose motors, of course. So, given that, are there any operational issues with inverter duty motors that some users might not be aware of? Really, the inverter duty rater duty rated motor is is really a standard, you know, coral cage motor, but it's just built a little, little heavier to handle a few more things. Um, they typically operate very closely to the standard motor and typically no issues are seen. Um, things we do notice that are different is because that inverter duty motor is built a little heavier, they will last longer. And you typically do see a, a price impact due to having you know, a little bit more robust motor, but that does come with a longer lifetime as well. Can you give some insights into how much more expensive inverter duty rated motors tend to be than general purpose motors? Yeah, typically, like I said, you are going to pay a little bit more. We typically see a range of about a 15% adder um, to go to an inverter duty rated motor over a standard motor of, of similar construction and horsepower. Okay. So to wrap things up here today, Brent, you know, what else beyond the motor uh, should users consider uh, when applying variable frequency drives? Probably a couple other things to consider in the electrical system. One is, is the wiring and really using a good quality VFD cable to go from the VFD out to the motor um, is, is really essential to making sure that the system will perform as intended. It really helps minimize harmonics that can uh, kind of leak into the rest of the electrical system uh, that can affect instrumentation and other sensitive electronics in the system. So uh, I would really recommend a good quality VFD cable be used uh, when wiring those motors. Um, another thing to consider is just grounding. And that goes a little bit into using a good quality VFD cable, but also just making sure that uh, the most issues I run into with VFDs and motors are related to improper grounding of that motor, um, the VFD and the VFD cable. So if that system is installed as designed, then the harmonics are really mitigated through the VFD and we don't see as many issues with uh, overheating in the motor or causing uh, uh, interference with that sensitive electronics and instrumentation out there. 
One other thing to consider is that if you are using a VFD, um, because of the electronics in the VFD, it does give the ability to reverse that motor within the electronics without actually adding any additional hardware. So there are some uh, additional benefits there um, using VFDs. Um, and most people are also aware that you know operating the VFD or operating the motor at, at a slower speed also helps with energy saving. And so, uh, if you don't have to run the the motor at full speed, you can have some energy savings as well, um, alongside some of those other benefits. Well, thank you for joining me for this podcast, Brent. And thanks, of course, to all of our listeners. Please keep watching this space for more installments of Automation World Get Your Questions Answered. And remember to visit our website at www.automationworld.com to stay on top of the latest industrial automation technology insights, trends, and news. Mm-hmm.